yes, when the music is out, I'm gonna, you know, definitely be looking for performance opportunities or creating them myself. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'll be sitting first row just like this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're like from the privacy of my home. In the privacy of my own home, exactly. Front row. I'm Keith, sure. I'm the editor at the tip. It's such a pleasure to finally meet you. Same. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be speaking with you today. So, I love your name, Michael Love Michael. It yes. Is How did you get this name? Talk to me about it. <laughs> So Michael Love Michael was kind of like, it's like a chosen name. Um, and I, I came up with it after, interestingly enough, there was another um, job that I'd had that I'd, that, I'd, that I'd left. Coming out of that job, I kind of had this, I was like seeing a shaman for a while. And she was doing like these like really powerful like healing sessions with me and like energy cleansing that basically got me in touch with like my spirit guide. The main one that I envisioned was sort of a blue winged messenger like creature. They were an angel and they had um, a sword in one hand and a book with a pen kind of sticking out of it in another. Uh, they have blue hair and red lipstick. You when they like, the huh? You rock a red lip, honey. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, so that's kind of my, that's become like more my thing, you know, like a, a red lip is such a symbol of like being like really fully in my power, you know? Um, anyway, this entity introduced themselves to me as Michael Love Michael. Mm -hmm. And the guidance I kind of took from from that moment was after, after coming out of that experience with the with the job and everything, I just told myself anything that I do that comes from a creative place is my most authentic place. And that will be under the name Michael Love Michael. Like it was just like a contract I made with myself. Mm. So it's just it's just an extension of that. Like the music, like you know, being a writer, um, being, you know, these are all things that I think are creative endeavors. And um, so that and anything else I do, you know, whether it's like I write a, a screenplay, which I do want to do, or um, I act or anything like that, it's all going to be under that, that name. Because that's like, that is like my authentic sort of like spirit self. Um, and it's like setting that intention every time I, put something out under that name too, that that's who I always want to be like in the world. I love so, that. I yeah. What kind of um, music did you listen to growing up? My first CD was Crazy Sexy Cool by TLC. Oh, mine was Destiny's Child, Writing on the Wall. <laughs> oh, honey, yes. And then I think that came sometime after, for sure. <laughs> like that was definitely in the collection. There was a lot of, I was, I loved Britney. I loved Aaliyah. And what? then, I loved like, I mean, my dad played a lot of like, I listened to Run DMC, BC Boys, Tupac, Biggie, um, you know, oh my God, like early, early Madonna. Um, and then I was even into like, you know, this was like on my own, my own exploration, but I got into like sort of like the white girl singer songwriter moment. So like Alanis Morissette, Liz Fair, Fiona Apple, like, you know, I mean, a lot of women, a lot of women, lot, you know, and um, I think those were just the voices I always resonated with the most. Um, also Nine Inch Nails, also Radiohead. Mm. So I was just kind of all over the place, all over the place. Um, <laughs> and that has not changed. <laughs> Talk a little bit about your, um, your sound. Your sound is a little bit different. I hear you mentioning like a lot of R&B, um, but I feel like your sound is a little bit alternative. How would you describe your sound? generally call it pop but I think what pop 
I think what people get sort of wrong about pop is that I think they think it has to like, basically like it has to sound like bubble gum or it has to be like, like a Britney Spears song is very yeah. obviously pop. But I think people think that all pop music has to sound like that. Yes. And I've always been of the belief, especially if you're Black, it's like, Khalees is pop. Nicki yeah. Minaj is pop. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Beyonce is pop. Like, yeah. these are pop stars, right? Yes. Who, who like, obviously dabble in, like, a wide array of other genres. But it, it's, and pop is short for popular, too. Yes. Like, it has, re it has broader cultural reach and resonance. So there you go. Um, yes. But I think, like, I would say that I love pop music so much and I, I like, like quite literally study it. Um, and I would say it's pop, but it definitely has a, f a million other flavors going on. Cause as, as I just mentioned from all the <laughs> music I grew up listening to, yes. it's just vast and deep. And I just, um, I hope that my music is a, a spectrum of, things rather than one thing you know i love that talk to me about jfc i listened that's your latest single mm -hmm. talk to me a little yeah. bit i heard that um i'm also trying to live my best black life <laughs> yes so, I that. can't believe all the ways that a great white lie want to ruin how i live my best black life but you won't get me down now you can't kill my vibe no you won't break my stride you'll never be i i i Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm glad you are. I think we all, especially at this time, should be trying to live our best Black lives, a thousand percent. Um, you know, whatever that looks like for you, you know. But um, that was written in um, a fit of anger, but I had sort of, like, calmed down enough to process my emotions and to, you know, and then then wrote it and realized I was still mad, you know, but I wanted it to be produced in a way where I felt like I was like sort of above the fray, right? Because I think, you know, so often as Black people, we experience different kinds of like disregard and disrespect, not only of like, you know, our beings, but just like of our minds, you know, um, uh, you know, we're told that we're told that we have less value than we actually have in ways that are both subtle and obvious. And, you know, and we're also told that like our, you know, I, I don't know how many times in my life and career I've gotten sort of subtle messages of, you know, you would sort of be nothing without me or, or you owe me this because I did that or whatever. And, I think I was just really reflecting on all of that. And I was just like, no, the fuck, I don't owe anyone anything. And I'm so, I'm not in a place where I'm willing to explain anymore or apologize for who I am or for what I bring to the table or for what I'm about. It's like, you're either with it or you're not, you know? And I do believe in the law of attraction and I will absolutely draw all the things to me that are for me and all the things that are not for me will naturally fall away. Like, I don't even have to do anything. The universe will figure it all out, you know, for me. So that's, like, the wave I'm on. And I think, like, JFC, I wanted it to sound, like, fierce and and um, and kind of and cool, but also, like, you know, I mean, it came from this this place that I'm talking about is one of, like, sort of empowerment and freedom and, and kind of, like, a personal magic. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted it to sound like a little witchy, you know, um, and a little haunted as well. Um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of how it came together as, as a concept. And then I wrote the track. I started making the beat on Logic. Um, I kicked it over to Rich uh, De Silva, who's like my main um, collaborator who I've made most of this album with. And Rich just like added extra glitz and technical sparkle on it and I'm really proud of it. It took me so long to get to a place where I could just say even when I was like not um, actively making songs where I could just say because I've been making songs in some regards since I was 16 
I've only just now gotten to the place in my life where I actually want to share it. You know, that's, that's, that's the difference. Like I've always written music. I've just never felt like I've, I was brave enough or even had the right to share. And now I'm kind of like, no bitch, like that's your, if God gave you a gift, like, why are you hoarding it? You know, um, we just reduce ourselves and it just feels like, Oh, this is what we're supposed to do. Shrink, shrink, shrink. But then when you, yeah. Oh, I can be this. It yeah. Good. Yeah, it feels good. I feel oh like <laughs> this is the thing. Like, I mean, I saw a t-shirt that I, I'm going to buy that I think said something like protect black trans girls, protect, uh, protect, um, hood black girls, yes. protect weird black girls, yes. protect, you know, fierce fashion black girls. Like it was like a whole list of things. Right. And what I identified with in that is just that as Black people, we contain multitudes. Like we have so many facets of ourselves and we are so rich and we have so much culture and so much spirit and it just courses through us. It's like innate, it's literally innate. And I just feel like if there's one thing I could ever communicate through music, whether, you know, I don't really care about whether or not people think I, have the best voice or have the best songs or or and even the best writer i think it's just about like it's just yet another form of expression you know because i have the right to express myself as i see fit you know at any given time and so i just think yeah writing whether it's writing whether it's music whether it's dancing whether it's like performing whether it's um I don't know if I decide I want to build a house or become an architect or, you know, like grow, grow food, farm, whatever, like whatever it is that nourishes my spirit is what I'm going to, whatever it is that makes me happy. That's what I'm going to. Right now, obviously you can't have a live audience, but will we see any performances? Like people are doing these live stream performances. Are we going to get any of those from you? Um, yeah. Oh, would be really cool. <laughs> when the album yeah, comes. for sure. No, I, that's something I'm definitely like thinking about. I just think like I've been so focused on, you know, like this album was like half of it was completed during quarantine, you know, um, and coronavirus, like, you know, um, so I feel like it's really, I've just been so focused on like finishing that. And I'm very much like a, I can have multiple things going on at once and I often do, right. but I'm, I'm really training myself to slow down and kind of work at my own pace and only do things when I want to do them rather than someone is telling me I have to do it. Um, so I think performing is one of those things where I want to do more of it. And I was literally before coronavirus, I was like taking dance lessons and like working with a choreographer. And I was like planning like a live show that I wanted to start like performing in different spaces. And um, obviously that all got shut down and I had to kind of like reconfigure my plans and just, but it also gave me an opportunity to really like, like I thought I was going to have an EP and I actually have an album instead, you know? So that's been beautiful. Cause I just, it actually nurtured my um, creativity in a really beautiful way. Um, anyway, that all said, yes, when the music is out, I'm going to, you know, definitely be looking for performance opportunities or creating them myself. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'll be sitting first row just like this. <laughs> you're, you're like from the privacy of my home. In the privacy of my own home, exactly. Front row. So, last but not least, on the music, what do you want people to know about you through your music or about your music? I just really, really hope that people, when they hear it, they feel a sense of like what's possible for themselves. Right. Um, you know, like I think my whole entire thing with with music. Um, as sort of like a a tool for messages is just to kind of say that music can be the place where you say all of the things that you feel you maybe can't say in any other part of your life. You know, whether you're listening or creating it yourself, you know, if you find something you resonate with, like that's probably something truthful that needs like further exploration. Right. And so I just, I think I just want people to like find that for themselves and like move toward that because that's probably where their light their freedom and their joy is going to come from you know 
because mm. that's definitely what music has done for me. So I just, I mean, you know, you see the skin, so. <laughs> exactly, you look, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm listening to the album because I want that skin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, I was going to say stream MLM for clear skin, okay? Yes, yes for good skin, yes, okay. <laughs> okay, for, glo for a glow. Like Would glow. you like a daytime glow? Stream MLM. <laughs> purpose, exactly. Clear your soul, your soul clear your skin. I love it. Yeah. So at the tilt, you know, we're all about debates and amplifying folks' opinions. So I'm going to ask you a couple, I'm going to do a lightning round. I'm going to ask you a couple of um, debates from our site and you tell me which side you're on. Um, these are really, really hard questions. So I want you okay. To okay. Favorite 90s girl group, Escape or SWV? <laughs> <laughs> you like, these are very tough questions. <laughs> this is a tough question. Um, I feel like everybody says SWV and I love them so much because the vocals, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? But then Escape, like, we can't sleep on, like, tonight, we can't sleep on that. Like, you know, they gave us a lot. They did. Um, and I wish they gave us more. And so Escape kind of feels like the underdogs between those two and I'm always rooting for the underdogs. So I'm going to say Escape. It's funny because 53% of our voters voted for Escape. That's that's funny. Um, okay. Most favorite underrated R and B dancing queen, Tiana Taylor or Tanache. I think let's see, I would say that people recognize Tanache for her artistic contributions, but not enough. Not enough. Her or not Tiana. enough. And I think Tayana was sort of like, it's tough too because Tayana was underrated in a way too for a while. Yeah. Like she had she had like a whole ass album before, you know, signing with Kanye's label. And it's like it's as if like when when Kanye put her in the fade video, that was a lot of people's introduction to Tayana Taylor. But I'm like, she been on. Like, you know what I mean? Like y'all the ones that are late. So I love them both and I love, I love, uh, but I think I will say because I'm more of a, like, I'm really, again, I like really grew up on like Britney and Janet and, you know, just watching them like do like intense pop locks and like choreograph everything. And like Tanache is the queen of that. So I will say, I will say Tanache. Tanache won that. She won that round. 62% voted for Tanache also. Mm. Because you love music, I know you were watching both of these. 106 in Park or TRL growing up? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, AJ is free, remember? Oh, I forget who hosted that, it after them. That, oh, after them, I think it was Roxy and Terrence. It was, yes, Roxy and Terrence. Oh, yes. God. But I remember the AJ and Free days. Okay. So this is, da I'm dating myself. Like, I'm 32. It is what it is. I just you know? Like, no, of okay. I'm like, that's fine. You know, I'm not out here. I'm not a Gen Z or like, I still remember dial up internet when you had to kick yes. people off the phone uh -huh. so that you can like use the slow ass computer. Yeah. Trust. So. <laughs> yeah, <you> <laughs> um, so let's see. Um, I would say 106. 106. Um, 106, because like I said, I think I was like, I was so dialed into TRL. I loved so much. Yeah. I used to school to watch both. I would watch both of them. Um, but 106, because it was like, it was so, it was such a celebration of Black culture. And that's, you know, we need as much of that as possible. Prince or Michael? Dang. I told you, it's hard. Why did you do this? Like, I'm, I'm offended. No, I'm from here, so it's just hard. God, they're so different, but also both deeply iconic. Like, how could you possibly choose? I just saw Purple Rain the movie like the first time. I know, like maybe it's so hard. That's really tough. I'm gonna, but I'm. You know what? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say Prince because I feel like his um, his kind of spirit is more aligned with my spirit. Yeah, I can see that for sure. I definitely feel that. I kind of fell off with Michael. God bless. He was yeah. such a 
I think he suffered so much. Yes. I think I sort of, yeah, there was a point where I was like, you know what? I'm going to just look over here for a second. You know what I mean? It's so complicated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is better? When we order some wings, are we getting flats or are we getting germs? Girl. Because I'm from Buffalo, New York, so I take my wings very, very seriously. Like, this is a. Uh, it's very serious. You're like, this is serious. This is serious. I don't play about my wings and I have to have blue cheese. I don't want any ranch. Like, I don't play like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have ranch. Um, I do. I definitely prefer like a wet over a dry mix. Okay. And do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know a lot of people love a dry, but I, I love a wet mix. I don't know what that says about me. Mm-hmm. We love a ranch. We love a blue cheese. We love all the sauces and we love a drum. <laughs> Oh, you like a drum? So yeah. Only 24 people like the drum. So there'll be okay. a lot of for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who's coming for me? They're like, um, how could you, you traitor? Thank mm-hmm. you so much for talking to me. You are light. Like, you are so beautiful. Like, your spirit, your spirit, I feel it through this, <laughs> through the screen. You're beautiful. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. This has been really nourishing. I really appreciate it. Enjoy the farm and all the fruit and the food and just have a ball out there. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. All right. Stay safe. Take care. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye, Keisha.